Our shoulder is marvelous. We have layers of ligaments and muscles on top. It looks confusing at first, and so what I did is I made a simple sketch. You could tell I'm not an artist, but I can draw the humerus or the upper arm bone, and I can draw the collarbone here or clavicle, and the shoulder blade known as the scapula. These three bones together, you can see, it looks like a floppy arrangement. How on earth can we have any power in our shoulder? with these bones flopping around. Well, the way it's done is through these ligaments, which have long names that actually make sense. Yeah, you gotta believe me. Okay, so look at the scapula. There is a coracoid process, and that's a huge anchor point, and the acromion. I always think of alphabetically A before C. Acromion, coracoid. And then here's the clavicle, collarbone. All right, those three areas are going to comprise most of the names of the ligaments in this region. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. So let's take a look at the first, and that's the acromion process, and the coracoid. You can see a ligament coming across from the coracoid to the acromion. So let's call it the coracoacromial ligament. What a name. Fits it perfectly. Coracoacromial. Okay, the next one. Here's the AC joint. This one people often injure. If they're running fast, they fall and hit their shoulder. You can imagine the separation between the scapula and the clavicle. There's a ligament, a very short one going from the acromion to the clavicle. And so its name makes sense. Acromioclavicular. Just like we had the coracochromial. Okay, moving on. We have the coracoid, which is a busy process. Remember, it's over here. It's going to have multiple ligaments tying that shoulder together. So it's really not as floppy as it might look. And so what I'm drawing in here are the coracoclavicular. And there's the word coraco, referring to coracoid. Clavic, uh, clavicular referring to the clavicle. All right, next we have this big joint, the glenohumeral joint. Okay, the glenoid fossa, which is a depression in the scapula, is going to join with the head of the humerus. I drew in some cartilage here, that's what the pink is for, to reduce friction. But we have a huge set of ligaments that are going to come across. And I like the name because this is called the glenohumeral joint, referring to the humerus and the glenoid fossa and so glenohumeral finally we have the big supraspinatus which is really a muscle and it's going to grab hold of the greater tubercle on the humerus and it's going to dive under and go and this is where the danger lies okay because we have impingement or pinching when someone says hey i injured my shoulder you can often guess that it's the supraspinatus that has been pinched be between the bones, between the acromion and the, the humerus. Okay, so let's get some labels here. Supra, oh, if you're wondering what, where that word comes from, supraspinatus, on the back side of the scapula there's a spine. So supraspinatus means above the spine, and there it is, supraspinatus. All right. Then the coracoacromio, we learned that one, goes from the coracoid to the chromium. I know it looks kind of messy in here now. And then we have the AC joint, acromioclavicular, that short connection between the clavicle and the coracoid. And then we have the coro, coracoclavicular, there. Okay. And finally, the glenohumeral. Right. So it all starts to make sense because we go, okay, there's a coracoid, there's a chromium. So that must be the coracochromial. And this must be the chromioclavicular. And this must be the coracoclavicular because the clavicle and the coracoid. Glenohumeral here, supraspinatus, which is missing in this. These are bursa. That's not a muscle. That's just bursa, little pillows. Another way to learn these is to... Uh, Make a clay model, which my students have done, and label it. And I thought it was interesting because the supraspinatus here is pinched 
and torn, just like it is in real life often.